This documentary will be split into three sections and feature two participants who will provide their personal insight into the topics of memory, media, and history. Whether we like it or not, the predominant vehicles for public memory are the media of technical reproduction and mass consumption. Mark B. Hansen. Memory, as well as the process of remembering, has been subject to a myriad of evaluations and reflections. Now, our current understandings of memory have become more complicated and multifaceted, especially with the advent of media. Alex, originally from Singapore. I moved here when I moved here when I was 12, so I've been living here in th for about 13 years. Alex and Mars are children of the millennium and were born into a new media environment that introduced society to different forms of communication and entertainment. So actually my first memory, I don't know if I actually remember it because I do or just because I've seen the videos after that. And I never thought about that before, but I think I just remember because of the videos, because I remember it from the outside, but it's just me playing in a park with my dad. We just got some 101 Dalmatians toys, and we were just playing with them on a, on a park, and he was just filming me around. Yeah, uh, I, I remember a flip phone, and I remember for first flip phone, but I think for me it was the Blackberry that was like, the most prominent thing for a while because of all the little phone games I was playing on it. That was like my shit. It's probably the reason why I'm wearing glasses right now. It's because of how much uh, time I invested in those little phone games. Are there like key moments from like those photos and videos where you remember things sort of happening differently? I didn't remember any of them. I just remember, remember them through the videos. So it's like the videos and the pictures have made the map of my memory. It feels like, it doesn't feel like I actually live the moment. It's just like seeing pictures and videos of someone else. It's like, yeah. it looks like from a past life or something like that. It was so long ago. I think video wasn't really big with my family. It was always photos. They really liked taking photos um, on phones at the time. And at the time it was like, we thought we would keep the phones forever. So we never back shit up. So yeah. Like I know it's me, but because I can't recall or like, for example, I have a picture of me just in the middle of the night mm. waiting for my dad because he used to work night shift. And I remember like, oh, yeah, he used to come maybe like at 2 a.m. But to me, that was like really, really, really late. And it was like waking up and everything felt like a dream. So I remember those memories, kind of like the memory of a dream. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, yeah, it, yeah, it happened. So yeah. it's very weird. I never really look back at old pictures of me, you know? It's just like, I kind of just store them in my head and then it comes and goes whenever it pleases, really. An example of media and memory intersecting is found within the studies of personal memory. The media philosopher Joanne Gard Hansen established a relationship between the two by pointing out the way in which we capture and view memories. Usually, this involves flipping through an old photo book, 
or scrolling through dozens of folders on an old family computer. We all perform our own mediations and perceptions in everyday life. But with the advent of handheld cameras, cell phones and internet access, we have evolved the environment into one of a hypermediation. A lot of animation, so Courage the Cowardly Dog, uh, Billy and Mandy's Grim Adventures, all, a lot of the Cartoon Network classics. Uh, stuff from Nickelodeon too, like iCarly, what else was there? I think I quite liked Hannah Montana, but I can't remember that much of it. I still remember everything I used to watch as a kid. And when I have like a low day, I go on YouTube and just watch the intro of the show and that gives me a lot of comfort. But I especially remember Digimon, because I used to watch uh, it at lunchtime with all my cousins and like in my grandma's house. Because yeah. in Spain, after school, you go home for lunch and then you go back to school, but you still have like a gap. Like growing up, I always found like sort of, I always took solace in films. Like growing up, one of my favorite things, one of my favorite memories, I suppose, is like visiting the video rental stores. Because it was just like, Ah, oh, it's like that stupid Forrest Gump quote, you never know what you're going to get. And also the Beauty and the Beast. Because I didn't have the v VHS, is that how you call the tapes? Yeah. You know, like VHS. the proper movie in a tape. Yeah. So every time I, I went to visit my auntie, I used to watch that movie that I couldn't watch at home. So it was like a very special and reachable one. I grew up a lot on Western media, but I think as I grew older, I really wanted to really explore more. So I've been pushing myself to watch different kinds of me like films from different areas like different countries like korean japanese chinese stuff french german uh, all this was like just trying to explore more because i think just being stuck to that kind of media isn't really progressive i would say yeah. i remember when i was in spain i still when i was a child i watched art attack which is a british show mm. and i remember watching the teletubbies as well when they like play something on their bellies yeah <laughs> And they showed the UK, and I remember being very confused because everything was so different. I was like, I don't like even the light and the color of everything and the way people used to behave. It was very confusing for me as a child. Yeah. Because I, I wouldn't understand what was going on. The American historian David Lowenthal once wrote that the past is everywhere. From photo collages to nostalgic films, we have created a cyclical environment, one of consumption and reproduction. I think my generation kind of judges technology and media because we grew up with it, so we are very aware. But my parents' generation, they just got it when they were already adults. Yeah. And they didn't, have, they didn't judge anything, they just took it and they embraced it, and they are very addicted to their phones, they are obsessed, they, they lost everything they used to have, like concentration, and you know how they used to say, oh, you watch too much TV, you're always on your video game, they don't say that anymore, they're like, they, how you say that? They encourage you yeah. to use more and consume more, like their parents are like, oh yeah, take the iPad, give, give it, the iPad to the child so he doesn't talk and bother anyone. Yeah. So it's like, what happened? In terms of how I think in, uh, raising a kid with a sort of knowledge of how this sort of uh, foundation of how knowledge of foundation of how technology works, I think I have to say I might be leaning towards the stricter side because it's a lot of it's a lot of information to process about the world in general, how people act. And also, it, it, it's not necessarily a true representation of the world. When I was babysitting last year, that's all they did. iPad and video games all day. They, you would talk to them and they wouldn't even hear you. They're like, what? What? Yeah. Completely absorbed by an iPad. It's just horrible. I think the current state of media, for me, is very commercialized. I think, especially with the rise of things like TikTok and Instagram, where media is shorter, I think it 
it kind of impedes on people's, especially kids, um, attention span. For what I've seen when I was babysitting, the, the dad was literally in the same room and he was doing the same, he was in his phone or just ignoring them and allowing that situation instead of saying, setting boundaries and restrictions. They just, it's just easier to say yes to everything the child wants. Yeah. They don't want to educate anymore, they don't want to raise, raise a child. Hansen stated, technology and media are the predominant vehicles of forming memories. They act as the base for our present reality and our psychic world. filming and we could see what he was filming at the same time on the TV so it was like seeing yourself live. Do you think there is uh, a, a, a different way in perceiving nostalgia and memory, looking back, back at those memories, photographs? As we look into the future and prepare to raise a new generation in our society, we must question, what version of reality do we want the future to live in?